with uh, Mike Perry, one of the lead developers on Dark Spore. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing great. How are you? Not too bad. Uh, one of the first things people tend to ask me about Dark Spore is, is it related to Will Wright's Spore in any way? Is there any relation there? There is. Dark Spore is built on the technology from Spore, but it is not an expansion pack and it's not a sequel to Spore. It's its own game. In fact, what Dark Spore is, is it's an action RPG. And what that means is it's a game about loot. And as a game about loot, what we have is a game about collecting characters, each of which has their own unique abilities that you can use in combat, and then collecting parts to upgrade those characters. And that's where the technology from Spore comes into play. When you collect parts, they have stats, and you put those parts in your characters to upgrade the stats. But you can put those parts on your character wherever you want to. So everybody who plays Dark Spore is going to have their own unique collection of characters, both in their appearance and in the combination of stats they use. Awesome. Did you ever play Mail Order Monsters on the Commodore 64? Oh, a classic Amiga game. We absolutely love Mail Order Monsters. Yeah, that was my jam when I was like eight years old. And this seems like the Mail Order Monster sequel I always wanted because there are a lot of uh, single player campaign to it as well. You know, we support all of those modes. As an online game, we persist your whole collection, your progress, and everything up on the Dark Spore servers. And that lets you install the game on as many PCs as you want. There are no restrictions on where you can, you can install the game. Uh, and it even lets you go to the darkspore.com website and access your collection of characters there and organize squads. Squads are a key feature of Darkspore because you'll organize your collection into a squad of three characters, and those are the three characters you'll bring down to each planet, both in the campaign and in PvP. And switching between those characters is exactly what you'll want to do depending on the enemies you encounter. But those same characters that you play in the co-op co campaign are the ones you'll bring into PvP matches. So you can bring that in in a 1v1 or a 2v2 match and see how your upgraded characters uh, pit themselves against other players' upgraded characters. Um, how many different combinations of uh, characteristics that you can apply to your creature, and how many different types of creatures are there? Uh, if you had to give me a ballpark on that. Yeah, yeah. There are dozens of characters you can unlock in Dark Spore, and every one of them has their own unique name, backstory, and combination of abilities. But the parts you can collect, there are hundreds of thousands of different parts and different combinations of stats. So every player who plays the game is going to have this choice of, well, what stats do they think are the most important stats on their character? Which ones do they want to upgrade? When you see another player in PvP, you really need to pay attention to their strategies because you never know what they've done to upgrade their guys. Why, why the dark in the name? Because uh, that's another thing people, well, how dark is it? Is it real dark? You know, the Dark Spore is named after the enemies in the game. Uh, the Dark Spore were created by a mutant strain of DNA that escaped a laboratory and started to infect and mutate planet life throughout the galaxy. You as a player play the role of a character called a Crogenitor who can master science and DNA, but also has created a race of beings called genetic heroes. Those are the characters you collect in the game. And you'll use those genetic heroes, upgrade them, and fight the forces of Dark Spore and save the galaxy. Sounds rad. Getting psyched. Can I give it a try? Definitely. All right, I'm jumping on. Dark Spore, check it out.